Hi, this is uh, Matthew Robert Payne, and uh, this is uh, a teaching uh, bring uh, brought forth today. Uh, I, if you've been following me, I do uh, two uh, teachings each day uh, from the Word of God. Uh, this is uh, teaching comes from two Timothy chapter four. Um, uh, and it's going to be a verse 6, 7, and 8. Uh, so if you want to turn to your Bible, pause the video and turn to your Bible uh, and uh, read with me. Um, so in the New King James, verse 6 says, For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of no, my departure is at hand. Uh, I have fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. Verse 8, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on, the, on that day. And not only, not and not to me only, but, also to all who have loved his appearing. So um, I was aware uh, that uh, the drink offering was part of the law and would have been some sort of offering to the Lord that the Israelites did. There's an artificial intelligence program called chat gbt and it's just got a tremendous amount of information in it and uh i'd e encourage uh, any pastor or teacher uh to pay the 22 dollars american per month and use it uh, for research this is what it said i said uh what was considered a drink offering in the old testament in the bible so i typed that in and it said in the old testament of the bible a drink offering, also known as a libation, was a ritual pouring of liquid, usually wine or sometimes water, as an act of worship or sacrifice to God. Drink offerings were an important aspect of the ancient Israelite religious practice and were often performed alongside other offerings such as burnt offerings, grain offerings and peace offerings. The primary purpose of the drink offering was to honour and please God. The liquid was poured out on or near the altar as a symbolic act of dedication, expressing gratitude, devotion and supplication. The practice of offering libations can be found in several books of the Old Testament, including Exodus, Leviticus and Numbers. For example, in Numbers 15, 1 to 10, God provides instructions for the Israelites to present various offerings, including drink offerings, when they settle in the promised land. The quantities of wine specified for the drink offerings vary depending on the size of the accompanying uh, animal sacrifice. So uh, it's, uh, it, it was a thing showing your uh, devotion and worship uh, to God. So then I asked, what is the significance of Paul saying he'd been poured out as a drink offering? What, and it said, when Paul said he'd been poured out as a drink offering in 2 Timothy 4, 6, he was using a metaphor to describe his devotion and commitment to serving God and spreading the gospel. The metaphor is drawn from the Old Testament practice of pouring out a liquid, usually wine, as a sacrifice offering to God, as mentioned earlier. By using this imagery, Paul was emphasizing his self-sacrificial dedication to the Christian faith and the ministry he'd been entrusted with. In the broader context to Timothy, Paul was writing to his young protege, Timothy, while he was in prison in Rome facing execution. In this letter, Paul reflects on his life and ministry 
offering guidance and encouragement to Timothy, who would carry on his work. By saying he was poured out as a drink offering, Paul expressed his readiness to face the end of his life, confident that he'd given everything for the cause of Christ. The significance of this metaphor lies in its ability to convey Paul's unwavering commitment to his mission despite hardships and persecution. It also serves an example and inspiration for believers to follow in their devotion to God and service to others. So I want to encourage you that Paul's life was no ordinary life. And uh, we have in one of his letters uh, uh, an explanation of uh, all the things happened to him. He, he was... Uh, he was beaten with rods. He was he was uh, stoned one or two times. He was whipped with thirty nine lashes. Uh, he uh, had been shipwrecked three times. He he was uh, in the water for a night and a day. Uh, he often had to escape uh, people uh, beating him. He, he faced nights in the cold with no clothes, with hardly any clothes. He, he faced times of starvation. He, 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 I don't know many people who could have really coped with uh, what Paul did. And he, he, uh, he's saying that uh, right now um, my life is being poured out as a drink offering. I'm... Uh, Offering up my life to God um, in a self-sacrificial way, I'm going to uh, my death, and uh, I'm uh, doing this as an act of worship, uh, facing uh, my death and laying down my life uh, for the gospel. Uh, so he says, for I am being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now we see elsewhere uh, in Paul's teaching uh, where he said that he hopes to qualify uh, for the resurrection of the dead, uh, the second resurrection. And he said, not that I've already attained or am, that I'm perfect, but uh, forgetting what came before, I press on towards the price to finish my race. Um, so when he wrote uh, that scripture, wherever that was, I just uh, went through some of Paul's letters and I remember that uh, in part, I sort of paraphrased it there. Um, at that stage, as when he wrote that, he said, not that I've already attained the resurrection of the dead. So um, Paul's uh, message, uh, contrary to uh, what popular grace teachers preach, is that um, we're to uh, treat each day and work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Paul wasn't a believer in saying a sinner's prayer and that guaranteeing you go to heaven. Paul was a person who uh, believed uh, that uh, you could uh, lose your faith and you had to continually uh, work uh, on your salvation and with your faith to stay in the faith, uh, that uh, you could be uh, disqualified uh, uh, from your faith and uh, actions that uh, you did uh, could disqualify you from uh, going to heaven. And uh, there's a large uh, wave, there's a large uh, body of believers that are taught uh, the hypergrace heresy, uh, which says that uh, once you've said a sinner's prayer and honestly uh, committed your life to Jesus, then uh, you can't uh, be stolen, you can't fall away. And... Um, uh, 
That's simply not true. But at uh, verse 7 here, I fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith, right? He's saying I'm at the end of it. This whole uh, ministry of mine has been a fight, and I've been in a race. Uh, Paul said somewhere else that uh, we have to run the race. Anyone that completes competes in athletics have to run according to the rules if they're going to accept the prize. So he's run this race according to the rules, and uh, he's finished the race. It's uh, days or weeks or a short time before they're going to cut his head off. And uh, he said, I've finished the race. So he's saying he's writing this letter to Timothy as the last thing he has to say. And I've kept the faith is his way of saying, I haven't faltered. I haven't gone from the path. I haven't uh, been distracted. I haven't been pulled off the path. I'm glad to uh, write to you and say, although my death is coming any minute now, I'm confident that I've done everything I needed to do. And finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on, the, on that day, and not to me only, but to all who have loved his appearing. Uh, in other words... Uh, I've finished the race and I'm going to be crowned with my reward by the Lord on the day of the resurrection or on a certain judgment day uh, for saints. And uh, so all of you who uh, walk according to the faith and are faithful to finish your race too. So we've got Paul as an example here uh, that uh, his life has been a sweet, offering to the Lord. His uh, life was laid down as a sacrifice uh, to God. And uh, he he demonstrated uh, he demonstrated that uh, you can live with persecution, you can live with suffering, you can be beaten, you can share in the sufferings of Jesus and still make it. Uh, I I um I'm someone who 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 can't handle pain. I can't handle a headache. I, I can't handle uh, going. Well, I do handle going to the dentist, but I don't like it. I just can't handle pain. And uh, Paul was tortured and put through so much torture uh, in his ministry. And I, uh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm close to Jesus, but um, I don't think. I could have endured what Paul went through. Um, he um, he got uh, he got stoned in the city, and uh, they carried him off and uh, left him for dead. And then uh, he walked back into that city the next day. I heard someone preach. Uh, what sort of dedication would have you uh, walk back into a city? Uh, so. Um, it's taken a, a lot of years in my life to grow in intimacy with Jesus and grow close to Jesus. And um, I never used to be able to read Paul's letters and understand them. And now as uh, if you're following me each day, uh, you're finding that I'm bringing um, some meaning out of the uh, words. Um, I, I preached from uh, verse 1 to verse 5 yesterday and today I'm preaching 6, 7, and 8. So I, I hope uh, that uh, you've uh, been blessed uh, by what I've brought today. And uh, it's not as long a message as yesterday's messages, uh, but um, I, I just pray that uh, you can uh, be poured out as a drink offering. Uh, I pray that uh, your life is laid down as a special sacrifice for God, a way of honouring him and praising him and giving him worship. Um, it, it, Paul said, uh, or scripture says, that uh, uh, we should uh, lay our lives down as a living sacrifice. And uh, 
And uh, Paul uh, certainly understood that and gave his life uh, for the ransom of many. Uh, Jesus was the firstborn uh, son uh, of the resurrection. And uh, I'd say uh, Paul came closely like the Paul was very much like a Christ. Um, and uh, he certainly imitated Christ. He said uh, in Corinthians two times in the letter of Corinthians, um, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And um, as I uh, go through uh, these letters that you've written, Paul, I, I have to say to you, mate, that I'm, I'm very proud of you. I'm very happy. And I've developed such a passionate love for you and respect and honor for you and uh, praise God that uh, you went before us and wrote these letters that uh, are able to instruct us and teach us and uh, all praise to God uh, for your life and uh, I'm certainly learning a lot my brother uh, from reading your letters so I pray that uh, you were encouraged by that Paul said thanks just then um, I pray that uh, you're encouraged uh, by this teaching and uh, you learn something and I hope that uh, you can uh, find the time to like this uh, teaching and uh, even write a comment for me. God bless.